Discovery 4 computers now have primary control of critical vehicle function. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody and welcome back to Mission Control on a bright sunshiny day here in Denver, Colorado. I hope it's nice wherever you happen to be, even if we are all stuck inside, but at least we get to hang out and talk lighting, which is always a good time. So today with us I have uh, Sebastian Butel, he's our German uh, distributor and uh, is the king of all things macro, since that's what we're going to talk about today, we have him along. Uh, go and say hello Sebastian, so everyone can actually hear you hopefully. Hello, I can hear you, yes. Cool, Perfect. cool. Hopefully everyone else can. If you guys uh, can't hear sub uh, talk, let me know so we make, make sure we fix it real fast. Uh, but otherwise, I'll just assume we're good if I don't see you guys say anything. Uh, so the first thing we're going to actually go through is uh, some useful features. Uh, though I know that uh, rig uh, recently uh, we've done some of that with Select If, that we talk about it again real quick. And then we'll uh, move off into macros. So I'll switch back over to our usual display here. Maybe. No. Uh -oh. Maybe I won't. Uh, one second here. It looks like uh, I forgot to check this, and I thought OBS was working, but uh, or NDI was working, but apparently not. One moment. There we go. Now I've got it. We just need to. Get Titan back online. So I'll give Titan a moment to launch here. Uh, as usual, we are using the uh, Titan Go interface on version 13, but I don't think there's been any real changes in the macro system, uh, at least that we'll be talking about between 11.4 and version 13 that'll have uh, any effect for uh, all involved on this one. I don't think that's a drink already, Sam. It's not my fault that the, uh, well, okay, fine. It was my fault that in India I wasn't running, but I don't think that's a drink yet. I, I, I did switch the screen. I just didn't have it turned on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, so I think what we'll do Friday, everyone, is we'll do a, uh, we'll just have, uh, we're going to do a Q&A &A and we'll have it a cocktail Q&A &A where even I will have a drink while we talk. So we'll see how many skins I forget to switch while I'm drinking. That'll be a grand old time. Mm -hmm. uh, so now that we've got our interface up and working here, uh, Select if is a function that allows us to uh, select items based on uh, parameters for them. Like if we uh, were to raise this fader up here, and let's see if uh, Capture's working today on this one. Hopefully it is. If not, we'll... Eh, of course it's not, because that would make things easy. Uh, let's try... Let's try load up another show file. I should have tested this and didn't do it. Let's try loading a quick save from a week ago. It should be fine because I don't think we're going to lose anything that's going to cause us a problem, but hopefully Capture will decide to start working. Let's see. I think it is working, but I lost all of my windows, but that's okay. Put that there. And we'll bring up the playback. Yes, we can see it. All right. We'll just record another play. Record a workspace right there. So, uh, Getting back to selective, so if we raise a fader here, we can see that we have uh, uh, items playing. If we use the selective function by clicking on it, boo, why can I suddenly not find you? There you are. Selective, I can select fixtures in last fired queue, so I can hit that select there on soft key A, and perhaps, or not, because that would make life easy. Why are you suddenly not working? We'll just do it that way. So, if I hit select if twice, it selects all fixtures that have an intensity greater than zero. Uh, I can also do things based on palettes. Like if I have this fire playback fired, if I did select if and then the red palette, we can see that it selected all my fixtures that used the red palette. Uh, you can also do uh, position palettes. So if I did select if, and I believe I have the drum palette being used in this one. No, I don't. How about the lead singer? Nope, wrong again. Well, one of these palettes has it in it. Let's look too. 
well, whatever. Point being, it would do it with uh, palettes, too. I just don't remember what I have recorded in this particular playback. So that's uh, some basics on select if. You also you notice if you click it in your uh, prompt in your context menu area on uh, most consoles, so just the left with half keys B, C, and D, you'll have these same options down here or using the Titan Go interface down here. Uh, you can do it to select things uh, uh, with these particular contexts. So pretty handy to happen have there. So um, we'll move on from that and let's uh, let's talk about macros, the whole reason that probably most of us are here today. <laughs> so are you guys, let's see how much of it's running slow on the stream or just on OBS here? Uh oh. I wonder if that's this wonder if OBS is I've gone completely silly here. We might have to get a little silly with it. Yeah. But uh, we will see. So, hmm. A macro is a shortcut for a series of commands designed to make, designed to make the user's life easier. Uh, we have a library of macros. We look at assigning to executors. And we also look at uh, recording our own. Uh, macros can be used on their own or embedded into keylists using the playback view, as we saw when we had uh, keylists the other day. Uh, Signing a play macros to play a pre-recorded macro. You can press the macro button, then choose play from the soft keys. You're then presented with a list of macros. Blotty, blotty, blotty. Well, I don't feel like reading all this today. Uh, we can basically we can get through them through the show library or through the macro hard key on our consoles or uh, Titan interface. Uh, to record a macro, uh, press record, then choose uh, on soft key record. You'll then have the number. Uh, you'll have the options on the soft keys to enter a name and user number, and also choose whether to record a macro in real time or full speed. Real time records how long it takes the user to press buttons, while full speed records go straight through the button presses instantly to the end result. Uh, to finish recording a macro, press the macro hard button again. Uh, delete a macro, you press the macro with the view all, then delete, and you can delete it from the show library, as we saw before. Uh, before we get into the complex macro, uh, let's talk about some of the stock ones. Uh, so if we do our open workspace window on our consoles, and we switch over to where we can see it first, uh, we hit the open workspace window, and then we find uh, the macros, or find the show library. And I'm just going to cheat and type show. It'll bring up our show library, and then we can go down here to the macros uh, filter and we see all the uh, macros that are in the console. Okay. Uh, we can see there's some, uh, some of my personal favorites are the palette fade macros and the palette overlap macros. Uh, so I didn't put those in my uh, windows here so I can quickly change uh, my fade times for my macros and my palettes uh, without having to press the palette hard key and then type them in here. I can simply just tap this macro and get my overlap to uh, 25 and my time to three, so now I have uh, some fixtures up, so we can see them. And I was to tap, say this uh, red red uh, palette here, and I have the, the overlap do the 25% and the uh, uh, the time the fade time of three seconds, like I had set there. So, what are some of your more favorite uh, uh, pre-recorded macros here, Seb? Pretty hard at once. No, I'm pretty much with you on the palette overlay overlap and the percentage. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, actually, I think to my mind the macros is more useful um, to record something yourself. Honestly. True. True. So uh, I started to use macros, self-recorded ones, very very easy ones. With the, on, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, uh, on a Pearl Expert with a wing, because I always found the wing, the touch wing on the Pearl Expert very awkward because it is somewhere else. And so I put my macro to press the clear button and the exit button on the wing. Ah. Very easy ones, yeah? Yeah. That's and a... it is so easy just to make it make it comfortable to, to operate it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, actually that would make things a yeah. lot easier. Yeah. And it is so easy just uh, to record it. Just press macro, then just uh, put it where you want it, uh, then press the clear button, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely makes it uh, much easier. Uh, Cree, I uh, saw your question. Uh, what did I use to make the intro? Uh, Final Cut Pro, because I have it. Uh, so uh, let's move, let's go switch back to our, uh, our uh, display here. 
Let's talk about a complex complex macro. A good example of this would be for chases. Uh, when recording a chase, uh, the user has the has uh, to select the fixtures required for each step, do the changes, then append the step. If you were to create a dimmer chase with, say, 50 fixtures, it could take a while uh, to do. A macro can be created to help record a dimmer chase faster. Well, this isn't even my favorite one to show file to do this particular one with, but we'll do it with anyways. Uh, so I usually do this in my class where I said see page uh, 31 of the booklet. Uh, you guys don't have that. Uh, so we'll show this. Uh, I'll just leave this one on screen for a minute so you can screenshot it and look at it later. Uh, but then we'll just do what's on here. And that should be long enough. So we'll switch back over to our uh, mobile display and we'll show here. So what I'm going to do is record a macro that can make, make doing a uh, chase easier. So... Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just uh, select our fixtures and just throw a locate on them. We'll do it with our uh, our dimmer group. So we're going to hit record twice to create a chase. Then we'll select an empty fader. And then, uh, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and hit my uh, fixture plus one button. And now I'm going to uh, start recording the actual macro. So we'll hit the macro hard key here. And then we'll choose record from our soft keys. And then we can give it a name. I'm just going to leave it uh, macro 14 because I'm being lazy about it. And we're going to have it set for record and full speed. And we'll just choose where we want to put it. In this case, we'll put it right here. Now it's anything we do is going to record it into this macro. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the uh, at button twice. So at at, it takes our fixture that's selected and puts it at full, even though it was already up there. Uh, then we'll hit append step and then type at zero, enter. And then I'll hit our fixture plus one button. And now we'll uh, press the macro hard key. Uh, you can see that it was flashing to let us know that we were in that record mode that entire time. So we'll press it again to stop the record. And then we're just going to exit and clear and delete this uh, macro we had, or this chase we had, because it was just a dummy for us to uh, do what we were doing there. Let me see if I want us to switch, switch back to the other slide uh, and look at it. Uh, we'll just talk about it. So basically, we created a macro that takes the intensity of the selected fixture, puts it at full, adds a step, that puts it at zero, and sets itself up for the next figure along. This can be used as a button while recording a chase. So if we go ahead and start recording a chase again, we can hit record twice, select an empty fader. We'll select our uh, all dimmer group, which has, uh, oh, golly, how many fixtures does it have in that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 fixtures in it. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and uh, hit our fixture plus one button, and we'll tap that macro we made 11 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then we'll hit exit and clear. And now if we fire this chase, we can see that we made a chase that goes through our 11 fixtures just that quickly. Uh, Pretty handy for uh, doing a chase, you know. Is it is handy for a lot of shows? No, not necessarily, unless you've got a you know very large uh, number of park hands. But here's also where it gets even more fun with doing a macro like this. So uh, we'll start another chase. We'll do. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at my fixtures and groups here real quick. I can't remember how many. Where are my fixture pages? I can't remember how many of these there are. One, two, three, four. 8, 12, 16, 24, or 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. Let's go to this one. So that if we uh, select this group and we hit our fixture plus one button and we hit a record twice, choose an empty fader. And now we're going to type in uh, 3, 6, and then tap that macro and let it get finished running. and then hit exit and clear, and now fire that chase and see that it very quickly made a, we'll speed that up a little bit, made a 36 step chase in uh, what that was, what, uh, 10 button pushes instead of having to do that. You know, 36 steps before would have been like a couple of hundred clicks to uh, perform the same thing. So that's a great way you can do with a button press macro uh, to record a large amount of steps very, very quickly uh, for a chase. Um, another thing I like to use recorded macros for is I record a macro in uh, the big show I do every year in Denver. Uh, it's called the National Western Stock Show. I have 
a couple dozen fixtures and many different fixture types. So what I do is I have a macro recorded in uh, real time. I actually didn't explain the difference between uh, real time and full speed. We'll step back that in a second and say it and talk about it. But uh, I had recorded in real time, so it basically goes through and lamps on all of my fixtures uh, like I was actually doing it on the desk myself. Uh, full speed, real time. Full speed is going to make the console press the buttons as quickly as you, basically as quickly as it could possibly can, more or less instantly. Uh, full uh, real time is going to even spend the time that you spend in between hitting each button press. So if you hit a button and wait a minute and hit a button, it's going to have that full minute of time uh, put in there. I don't think there's an upper limit on that time. Is there, uh, Seb? Did you notice? Um, an uh, upper limit? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I heard one story. One thing is to remember, uh, if you are in uh, the macro record mode, is to turn it back off. Uh, I was, had a user tell me a story out in a class that they had started recording a macro, forgot they were recording a macro, and did about 45 yeah. minutes of programming, and yeah. then turned it off, and then made the mistake yeah, of firing that's... that macro. Yeah, and... that's, that's probably true. I mean, in the, in the beginning, earlier, it was like, Macros always, uh, always recorded things like um, DMX input. So if you set up DMX input, uh, because technically it is like um, a key is pressed. Uh, okay. So every th every time you uh, the desk was recognizing some DMX input, um, this was recorded into the macro. I don't I don't know actually if this is still true. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Strange things actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also made the mistake of firing that macro, and once you start a macro running, you can't stop it. So he had yeah. to wait for the whole 45 minutes of record to finish yeah. playing before he could do anything again. Uh, so definitely make sure that if you do that, you you shut off your recorder, be expected to, or delete yeah. it instantly so you don't uh, have a bad, bad day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three hours of lamping on fixtures. Yeah, that would be quite a pain, Sam. Uh, so um, that's kind of all I really wanted to show with uh, that stuff for the macros. Uh, what do you have uh, for us, Mr. Seb? I know that uh, we wanted to show some stuff up on screen at some point. Uh, I'll hand it over to you for a moment. Tell us, tell us what you think yeah. about some stuff. Um, I mean, um, this example with, with the demo is a very old one. I really love to, to uh, show it to my um, to my students as well. So, and I always tell them it's a good idea to um, write down the steps you want to record into a macro. So, um, like what you did when you wrote the chase is you went to record chase, then you selected the fixtures, and then um, there's a section which I indented here, like fixture plus one, add, add, append step, add zero, enter, and this is what you want to repair, repeat in your macro. And finally, of course, you have to exit and clear to exit the chase. So that's why, um, please write it down. So because if you write it down, then you know what goes into the macro. Um, and then it's easy to change this, for instance, to make a um, color chase. And uh, I just changed the two steps, which are add, add, in order to set the dimmer to 100% and add zero, enter, to make it zero. Um, if you change this to call a color palette, And the last one, um, of course, you have to not put it to zero, but you have to uh, um, set color to off. And if you write this into a macro, it's very easy to make a um, color chase, for instance. Uh, so again, um, a strong recommendation is to write down the steps you want to um, write into your, um, into your chase. That's what I wanted to say because this is really universal. Yeah, write yeah, down, yeah. and then it's easy to make it. This is true. This is very true. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't think about using that same one to make a color chase the same way, but that yeah, that would work out uh, very well to just do the yep. the initial color, the color you want it to go to, and then the off color uh, to yep. get it to go back to uh, whatever else you wanted. That's a very yep. uh, handy little one. It can come in very handy. So now everyone can see uh, myself and uh, Seb in Teams view. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you can actually see it's all in there. We usually, uh, I usually hide yep. off camera because, as I like to say, that uh, okay. I, I've got the face and voice for radio. Yep. So. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, so uh, let's turn it out to some questions. Let's see what we got here. What's uh, Nigel saying? Uh, recording a macro, if you're busking a light show for a band that will do the same gig, <laughs> which is think it would be pretty cool as long as they don't have to restart any songs. That that would work. I guess maybe it was a track act and they uh, uh, played the same songs in the same order at the same uh, break, uh, breaks in between at every point, point. but at that point, just make it a time code show. Uh, you know, you get the same thing out of it that way. Uh, but that, you, you could do that. I would be kind of scared to see it go because, again, you can't stop a macro once it starts. So if you recorded a two-hour long macro, you'd be stuck with it running for two hours. So it, uh, that would be kind of a dangerous one. But any other uh, macro questions out there from all of you? <laughs> we'll switch back over to this one. Oops, I did really just, there we go. You guys are real quiet today. Not a lot of questions uh so let's uh let's find something to poke at uh while we wait for you guys to try to come up with some questions so if we switch back over to our titan go interface here um maybe cause it wasn't clear so we'll just uh clear it up son you can put a uh, macros uh anywhere in any of these palette windows as we see i have have them here in my uh positions uh palettes where i put everything but i could put them in the gobos and beams tier too so i was to open the show library again I could do, uh, let's see here, would be something kind of fun to toss in there randomly. We could have it, uh, do, 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 do. we'll toss in the, uh, we'll do that one, we'll do the active playbacks. So say instead of having to go find my, my active playbacks window by doing open workspace window and then you know, even if I had this cleared out, I then have to, you know, maybe I was in here instead of having to hit a whole bunch of buttons, I can just hit this macro here and bump the active playbacks window. It opens that right up even though there's no active playbacks currently. There we go. Now I got one running. Uh, so we can see that it would just pop those open for me uh, straight away. So that's kind of handy there. And again, I just did uh, copy or move out of the, uh, the show library window and can move any of these from there. I know there's... Uh, one thing would be kind of fun to put in a queue list is let's see if I can find it. It may not be in here because I'm using the Titan Go interface, but the uh, there's a dim desk lamp macro. See, I don't think it has it in when you're using this interface here, but you put that in a queue list. So uh, if we bring up our queue list view, yeah, and we scroll over, Smart. we've got the macros column. It's a nice one. Yeah, yeah, you can put anything in here you want uh, for macros. So if we do We'll open our show library again. We'll make it reasonably sized. Uh, say we wanted a macro that uh, when we go to... Uh, this is the release beam macro, isn't there? Where's that one? There it is. We'll put the release beam macro in our last queue. So if we do copy this me to here. How are you going to do it that way? Add and we'll find our oops. L. Ah, release me. So now yep. when we fire this cue list, we can get everything else off here. Get our first cue, our second cue, our third cue, and I'm just gonna bounce through them quickly. Now, when we fire our last queue, we can see that it releases the queue list for us. And I would usually put that as a dummy queue, so I'd actually see my last queue. I'd just put a insert, basically a blank one, and then put my release me in it. So when after I hit go yeah. for queue 10, it would just release that queue list for me. So that uh, is a handy one. Uh, yeah. What is Mr. J saying here? Any plans to implement a kill macro type of feature? Uh, not that I can think of, Jay. Um, it's really, you know, not very often that uh, someone would uh, make a macro that lasts hours long. That's usually an accident, just something to 
I don't think it happens very often. I don't think that other than that one story, I don't know of anyone who's ever done that. Uh, on, uh, anyone else who's ever done something like that. Man. Many years, many years ago, it was possible to write a macro, uh, to record a macro, um, which rendered the entire console useless. Oh no! But this was was like five years ago or so. The oh, trick wow. was um, the macro. This in this particular version, I think it was version seven or so. Um, it was possible to write a macro which left a text input. And uh, then again, it uh, would take its own output uh, as an input for the number of times it has to run the next time. So it, the first time it let like two as output. Next time it ran twice and left. That's why it um, it was how to how to say it was run more and more and more and more and more. So finally, the entire console was only running um, in order to execute a macro. Oh wow! It was really strange. Yeah, it was like the macro of death, so to say. <laughs> but this was like um, version seven or so, version seven or version eight or something. Yeah, it was yeah. really strange. That would be uh, that would be a, definitely a rough yeah. day. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but but other useful, really useful macros are macros for set lists. But I think you covered this in the set list. Yeah, thing, we went over it. Uh, we went over it a little bit, yeah. uh, but we can yeah. uh, poke at that more. So if we do, open for in order space, to in order to release the previous page and call the next page and stuff like that. Yeah. So if we had our set list up here running, uh, I'll make this large size here, uh, and we have here we have the workspaces and macros. Uh, we have the set list macros, which would be a macro that happens every time you change a page, and you have track yep. macros track exactly. macros that are for that particular track. Uh, so yep. like if we did a set list, one for uh, the entire set list, we could do, uh, what is it, the release held over uh, is one of them. It's handy for that, or is it, uh, let's see here. Yeah, release all held over is hand, handy for that, so it would release uh, anything from another page, correct? Yeah. So you could have it uh, just any time you change the page, it would release all the macros on that previous page. I don't know why it didn't just show that, but. Well, probably I don't have any tracks. So it's, it's doing here. We'll just do a new list and we'll do it from pages. There we go. Now, if we add a macro, set list, release all held over. Ah, now it did it. So now if I have uh, these, these up and running, and I go to my page two, you can see that it released those playbacks for me yep. automatically. So that's kind of handy uh, when, you're, yeah. when you are using set list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. It's another. Uh, so what I was going to do here is also uh, the macro uh, world. Actually, I don't have internet up on this laptop. If we uh, let's see if it wants to connect and not lose its NDI stream. So the macro rabbit hole does run quite deep. And we have the uh, the wiki for it. Let's see if it wants to come up. Do, 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 do. And let's see how lucky we are. All right, it's still working good. Uh, so the rabbit, the rabbit hole of macros does run a lot deeper than uh, we've got here, obviously. And if you go to uh, avalice.de slash wiki, uh, you can look in here and uh, learn a lot more about the macros. Uh, that you can hard code. Uh, I don't really want to go into it in this particular one, uh, but they it runs quite a bit in here. They've got a share. Uh, about how many macros do you guys have up here nowadays? Uh, do you know? I don't. You can you can have a look. Go to um, go to the macros. Um, left left side top item custom macros. Left, 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 left. Okay, right. on this uh, another way. Yeah, yeah I, got now, I got it now. Or well, uh, no, it's just there. Now, now go to examples. 
down, 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 ah, there down, it is. down, down. Examples. Being blind today. There we are. And you see here a whole bunch of macros that uh, uh, you have written and other folks have written, yes? Mm hmm. It's not only me, it's Alex, it's uh, Jonas, and some more. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, quite a handy stuff to uh, you can just, and then you can, uh, through, uh, it tells you in, in, on the same site here how you can import them into your show files yeah. and get them uh, to be able to use it in your current show. So, you have all kinds of uh, yeah. random, 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 Wow, that's not that is not a shabby number. I haven't looked in here uh, in a while, uh, but you, a bunch of macros you can have do uh, just about anything you possibly need. Uh, what would you say? Uh, what do you think is one of your more favorite ones in there? No, there's not any favorite ones because they're always made for a special purpose, so to say. So that's why um, depends from your situation. Yeah. True, true. Uh, so there, there are some macros which are, um, I mean, the, the most sophisticated macros are those by um, by Alex, for instance, um, who really does his, his entire show on uh, on uh, time code, for instance. So uh, that's why you have um, macros for MIDI show control now and MIDI machine control, where you where it's really easy to control Reaper in order to um, uh, jump to a certain point, for instance. So everything is very special. It sounds like strange what I'm talking about, but you can do magic, magic things with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. hey, here's the MIDI machine control, uh, some yeah. bows, and uh, turning on the show control on and off, I'm sure. And yeah. uh, I believe this MIDI note one on off is sending MIDI out of the console, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So pretty handy getting there, and the, you know, this is something you could uh, get in there and read, and uh, uh, you know, learn learn about some more of myself as well as start f tumbling down that rabbit hole of doing the hard coded macros, <laughs> which I know yeah. is quite the quite mm -hmm. the rabbit hole. And every time I get start getting into it, mm -hmm. I spend entirely too long looking through stuff and playing with stuff, and then it's you know suddenly, yeah. you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning by the time I uh, figure yeah. it out. Yeah, it's like patching an AI. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. You can get down, you can get get going and stuff, and then get so far along, yeah. you're like, oh dear golly, where did I mm. end up? So, uh, let's see here. Any anybody got any questions? Wow, you guys are so not questionative today. You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, it's very silent. I was so I was expecting more to hit us with a bunch of questions to stu to try and uh, uh, stump us, but they haven't they haven't tried very hard today. Well, if you guys still start asking questions here soon, we might just go into just call this a short one today and uh, mm. uh, move on. But uh, anyone got any questions whatsoever? I know you're all I know we got you know nearly thirty of you today, so that's uh, not a bad number. But uh, ask some questions. People are overwhelmed. We're all in just awe. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Updating color palettes in blind. Uh, is that a question? Yeah, there are some macros about this in the wiki. Ah, okay. Let's see here. Corey's got one for us. I was trying to record a macro that would release the previous cue in a cue list uh, for a white flash, uh, but the values tracked through the playlist. Um, that would just be turning off tracking uh, to solve that problem, Corey. Uh, Nigel, is there a page in the manual or on the net anywhere that explains what some of the macros in Titan mean? Uh, I don't think there is. Um, some of the labels are 
fairly uh, self-explanatory, I believe. Uh, but uh, I guess the, the only other way to do it really just uh, have a play and see. Um, if we do... I mean, basically the names should be self-explanatory, don't you think? I would think so, yeah. I see 95% of them is pretty pretty clear. I mean, if we go to uh, here, the copy one's just going to engage the copy function instead of having to hit the copy button here or the hard button on your console. And I don't have it on the screen here. Haha, <laughs> drink. Uh, now that I have it on the screen here, uh, the copy macro here uh, just is, engages the copy function. Instead of hitting the button here, it's just you can put this macro wherever you want it. So maybe, you know, on a hard surface, you could have it, just like I was saying, having a, an exit and a clear macro on a wing uh, is more handy than having it yeah. all the way over there. There, quote unquote, yeah. on on the console, um, you know, like go button, go, same as hitting your go button. Uh, your window uh, min max size, mm -hmm. you can basically just change the size of the window that you're currently active. Is what I what I just did and made it so you hit that macro. Uh, release the the TT wing, the uh, uh, the B the B faders on the top or the bottom. Uh, especially, I mean, the, the names are pretty self-explanatory for themselves. Mode 2, how to crossfade from one color to another when using LED fixtures without cycling through the unrelated colors that occur during the crossfade. This wouldn't be a timed crossfade, but an executed on a fader. Uh, Joanne, that would be, well, unless you're using color macros, it should just, I mean, it's going to fade between red and blue. Just yeah. that, that's pretty normal. Unless you're using, yeah. uh, the, the colors that are in the, uh, macros of that LED fixture. And I would, I personally would quote unquote never use those. Uh, so you shouldn't I have think, that problem at all. I think there, there is a request for this in the, uh, idea section because on other consoles you can, um, you can define the path from one uh, from one color to another color, so, and this would be the case for that. Okay. Okay. That you, yeah, that you can define the path, whether you want to go from red to blue via green or via whatever, or via white or via black or whatever. There's a path. Yeah. But it is not implemented yet, and it's not possible to do it by macros. Uh, Eero, for a lack of questions, can you create a macro to run a dimmer effect that runs from start to finish at one click, uh, whatever else the program is running, like a one click blinder run? I wouldn't do that with a macro. I would do that with a keyframe shape, uh, yeah. more than likely, and set it to single cycle and, uh, maybe a delete no. Maybe a fade out and timed flash. That way, I just hit the button once and it would automatically release it. Would that work? Or I could do it in a queue list with uh, uh, release me as a second macro. Something like that might work too. I'm trying to think of how to have it release. Hmm. But yeah, I would do that uh, effect definitely with a with just a keyframe shape. So like if we. Showed it here just since we uh, don't have much going on anyhow. Yeah. Uh, if we were to we'll select these mm. dimmer group and we'll do shapes and effects, yeah. frame shape, create, and after dimmer at full, add frame, dimmer at zero, add frame, finish recording frames. Make this small so we can see, whoops, so we can see our there. Let's change these to snaps. And set our spread to, what is it, 11 fixtures on this, I believe. And set my cycles to 0.5. So then if I did record here and hit clear, now when I hit the flash button, You see that it runs through it uh, just once. 
I got to hold the flash button down while it runs the entire time, but I can make it into a queue list with a uh, uh, link after previous or, or the link after previous with the time needed for the whole thing to run, and then it automatic release me on the uh, uh, second one easily with the uh, link offset. That would how I would do it. Oh. Uh, Nigel, have I done a session on set list? And you missed it? Yes, I did that uh, last week. Uh, you get, that one is up on the uh, YouTube as well as here on the Book of Faces. <laughs> or no, I haven't done set list yet. I'm going to do set list. That's my bad. You know, these these uh, classes get kind of, kind of that, that Groundhog Day effect, you know, every day seems to be the same lately, and I forget <laughs> which classes I have and haven't done yet, or which sections I have or haven't done. Uh, but yeah, we will do set list, uh, I guess it is on Thursday, so my bad on that, but uh, yes, we'll have a, we'll do set list on Thursday, and uh, I'll make sure to include the macros in there, since we didn't... Uh, uh, we kind of glossed over it a little quickly on this one, but we'll make sure that uh, we do it again. I think it was, uh, didn't Gordon do a set list one, uh, last week or something, Sam? I think that's where my brain is think that we already did set list because, or maybe it was just the, during the Q and A, maybe that's where all that came from. But I guess one we did it on, on, uh, I had already done it. So that would be probably why. So any other questions out there today? Other than Andy telling me to slow down. How much slower can I go, cowboy? Yeah, this is the Mini Academy. The Avo must be an immense uh, console. Ah, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, I was going to wait to the general Q&A, but are you going to restart the schedule come May? Uh, Jay, I will restart the American, uh, or the U.S. Uh, training tour as soon as we feel it's a responsible time to allow travel and uh, gathering of people like that. Uh, but believe me, I am itching to get the heck out of, the, out of Denver and go do a class and get to see LDs and shake hands and uh, get some to learn, learn on in person because it is definitely harder doing this. Uh, without seeing all of your lovely smiling faces uh, or looks of confusion when I don't explain something very well. Uh, so, uh, yes, we'll do those as soon as possible again. Uh, asking, what's my favorite useful feature in Titan? Hmm. My favorite. Uh, I like Selective a lot. Um, real handy. Uh, you know, using palettes so I can select the lights that are pointed at my lead singer, let's say, because I build everything off of palettes uh, and uh, do it that way. You know, I can select, you know, I need to turn the light singer ones up or down or whatever. I can select it that way. Uh, I like a line. A line's a lot of fun. Um, like we can do the, uh, the color stuff like this and have it, uh, and apparently I have it on overlap still. Uh, do you do the quick color fades or nice looking color fades like that? Or like this one, which actually looks really kind of cool. It comes in with the, uh, uh, with the overlap in there. It actually looks kind of nifty. This is your overlap at zero and did it again. Kind of the same, but anyhow, it looks kind of nifty. Oh, yeah, ha, ha, I didn't have the screen switch. Just drink, drink, drink. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I had your guys' window up so I could see your your questions and not the OBS window so I couldn't tell that I hadn't changed. <laughs> That's my favorite useful feature in Titan is making you all drink on command. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's a feature of OBS and not Titan. Uh, but if we use our... Uh, I said you'd be able to use the align and have the uh, color fades like this and go in pretty quickly. Uh, 
when I was saying that they look kind of nifty the way they came in uh, with pallet overlap and the fade time uh, makes it kind of nifty the way they fade in. It's kind of cool on this. So that was beta one. Yes, you got me. Could I show you the align feature? Uh, the worst, yeah. the worst thing actually. <laughs> the way how it is implemented, it is just ridiculous. It, it is kind of a hot mess, uh, to to say the least. Uh, let's see here. To simplify it, some, by yes, yeah, uh, key profiles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I'm going to load my uh, small shows. It's a little easier to manage for this uh, rather than this rather large show. That's a little easier to manage with a small one. To at least a show. So only 10 fixtures uh, all rigged in a line. It's a lot easier to show. So line uh, as a function allows us to take uh, to share attributes between fixtures. So, so let's say that I had uh, just my odd BMFLs and I located them and I put them in a position and I give them a color. And I'm like, oh, I wish, you know, I should have selected my evens and had them do the same thing. So what I could do is I could select my even fixtures and then do a moving light menu, align fixtures, and I can leave it under repeat attributes, and then I can select my, uh, select one at least one of my other fixtures, and then hit align, and if we go back to see our, uh, back to see capture here, that'll work. We see that it put the other fixtures uh, in the same uh, position and color and everything else. So that can be on a handy like that. Uh, what you can also do with a line is make color spreads easily. So if I was to uh, select all my UFLs and I'm going to locate them. Did you, did you say easily? Uh, I don't think it's that hard. I, I, maybe I've just gotten used to it or I've, since I've had to teach it so many times I can remember it. Uh, the, the steps can get lost otherwise, but I've you know you teach it so many times you get used to it. So if we take uh, our first, we hit our fixture plus one button, make it red, hit our fixture minus button, make it blue. So our first and last fixtures have a color, and we'll make that spread across all of our other fixtures. So first we go in and we select all of our other fixtures. And we get capture back up here so we can see it. And then we go to uh, moving light menu, align fixtures. Uh, we set it to, instead of repeat attributes, we set it to spread attributes. We select our first and our last and then hit align, and we see we get that nice color fade. And if we go to our palettes, oops, capture back up here again. We'll do that one. I can then make it a color palette uh, just that easy. Now, if you're trying to do this at home and you've got version 11.4 and you're trying to make the color palette and it doesn't do this nice little spread on it, uh, it is not you. It is a bug that was uh, fixed. I can't remember if it was broken in 11.2 and 11.3 and fixed in 11.4 or fixed in 12. I can't remember which, uh, but it was broken and then they fixed it. Uh, so if it doesn't do this color fade and you just get a red-blue box like this, it's not you. It, it's the console. So if we were to hit clear and then select them again and tap our locate, throw a position on for silliness and hit the color that we just made, we get the same uh, spread effect of the colors. So, uh, any other questions, or did we get you all too drunk now, and now you don't have anything to say? <laughs> I, did, I didn't have one flub yesterday. I was so perfect yesterday, sub, and today they got me. They got me. They think, I think they do it on purpose sometimes. At least the way Sam seems to say it. <laughs> so, if... Uh, I'll wait another moment here, and if we don't have any questions, we might just call this an end to the day. Yeah. Did we lose the stream, or is it just... No, there it is. Okay. No, let's see there. Okay. It's just taking a long, little while since I watch it on my iPad to see uh, when stuff has actually gotten out to everybody. It was, seems to... It was taking a really long time. Can you align position spread? Uh, you could. I just use fan, though, because that just works better, I think. Um, but it work... Align will work on any attribute you choose. Uh, I just like to show it with color because it's the most, well, fun. So that's why I use that. But generally, if I'm going to spread stuff out uh, with a position, I'm just going to use fan, and may, I, I find that works uh, better for me anyways. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, I think with that, we will call it a day. I'd like to thank uh, Seb for yeah. joining us. And, thank uh, you. Uh, definitely, uh, we, though we didn't get any stumpers, it was definitely fun to have you uh, on the show. And maybe we'll do it again sometime uh, uh, yeah. as we go on through the world. And hopefully we can all get back out to doing shows uh, soon enough. I, I know you were telling me that uh, Germany's closed down for entirely mm-hmm. too long. And that's going to be rough yeah. on be rough on you guys out there. But uh, hopefully uh, maybe they'll... Uh, things will change and they'll lift it a little bit sooner. So yep. hopefully we can get lucky. But uh, with that, yep. we'll go ahead and call it a day. Uh, as always, you guys can find our uh, streams in the schedule up on the uh, avalice.com slash online resources, uh, avalice.us slash training events for uh, my U.S.-based uh, training once we get back out there in the world, as well as our schedule for this one. Uh, and what are we doing tomorrow? Because I do not remember. dot us and what is tomorrow tomorrow is the 22nd yes ah we're gonna do external time code or external control time code triggers in winamp uh that one might run a little on the long side uh, so we might have to uh uh, we'll see how that runs out, but uh, and I gotta get everything set up and practice for you guys uh, to make sure I get that one right and smooth. Uh, so that's what we will do in tomorrow. And uh, once again, again, thank you all for coming out, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>